Oh man, I have this geology test at three, Christina. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I didn't even study for it last night because I thought I was gonna be able to study for it today, but it turns out I can't study for it today because I have to go last minute to see an apartment. I guess I'm just gonna have to use knowledge injections. There's no such thing as knowledge injections. Well, great, I'm gonna fail geology now. Okay, so I figured actually the bulk of this would really be about the book club. So, I forgot to mention last time that I finished Twilight. And no, it's not what you're thinking, Twilight, the big popular vampire novel. This is Twilight Los Angeles 1992. This book, or play, whichever you want to call it, is really genius. Basically the premise is Anna Devere Smith, please don't get mad at me if I pronounce that wrong, I've never actually heard it said. She went to LA like seven years later, six or seven years later after the Rodney King riots and she interviewed over 300 people and took a lot of their responses and compiled them into monologues for this book and it's a coherent play so it's not just like a bunch of random monologues they all make sense and it's really wonderful if you like maybe the movie crash this is the type of thing you'd like it explores race relations guilt, blame, and the cool thing is you find yourself relating to characters that you wouldn't even think you related to. I find myself relating to the character who was, you know, the head of the Black Panthers in like the 70s. I used to live in LA in the 1990s. I was only three in 1992 when the riots happened, but my dad said that he remembered looking out his window at work and seeing just smoke all over the horizon. I can't stress how awesome this play is. It's actually supposed to be performed with only one person do all, doing all the monologues and we got to watch a performance of Anna Devere Smith doing that and it was really quite awesome to watch so you know if you get a chance this can really open your mind. Also because I finished that I guess I'm on my eighth book so this is my eighth book Sentimental Education before I seemed a little maybe nonchalant about reading it but the farther in I get the more I can really appreciate Flaubert I think I pronounced that right too please I'm not very good at pronunciation even of English words I really appreciate the fact that this was written in the 1800s and yet it still applies to my life I mean oftentimes you can't get that with novels written so long ago, especially satires, and this is a satire on like human psychology. My English teacher said he can't read chapters one and two in part three without crying, not because it's sad, but because it's so beautifully written, and I wouldn't go so far as to say that, but I would say that it's really masterful. Master of the semicolon and the one sentence paragraph. We should read more like actual like classics sometime because they're really good, and that, there's a reason why they're classics, and I know most people don't think of sentimental education as the most classic. Most people would want to read Madame Bovary, but I think it's really good. So, Christina, now that I actually talked about books, um, wow, I actually talked about books.